my dear fathers and sisters. It happened to me once. I was walking in the city of Cochin. I had to cross the road. I was standing by the side of the light. The light was red, so I could not cross the road. When I was waiting there, a young man came and stood near me. And I looked at him. I saw he was blind. So I thought I should help him to cross the road. I told him, my friend, I'm Father Augustine from Divine Retreat Center. When he heard it, he was so happy. He said, Father, I have seen you. Seen you? That's what he said. By the time the light became green, I told him, he told me his name was Tommy. I told him, Tommy, I will help you to cross the road. I held his hand. And the two of us crossed the road. All the time this young man was talking. A chatterbox indeed. Talking and talking. I liked him very much. I thought I should listen to him more. So I asked him, Tommy, shall we go for a cup of tea? And he was so happy. Oh, sure, Father, he said. But then he added, Father, provided you pay for it. Oh, sure, Tommy, don't worry. I will pay for it. I did not bring any money, Father, with me. I said, don't worry, I will pay for it. The two of us went to a restaurant and we were sitting, sipping tea together. At one point, I asked him, Tommy, you are young, you are so vibrant, and you are blind. Haven't you complained to God that you are blind? Weren't you sad about this? He said, Father, oh sure, Father, I was very sad. I was very desperate because of my blindness. Everyone in the family, Father, my parents, my brother, my sister, all are able to see except me. Why did it happen to me? I used to fight with my parents. What did you do to me? Until, Father, I came for a retreat to your center. That's when he heard me, he said. They asked him what happened during the retreat. He said, Father, Jesus told me that my blindness is a blessing. My blindness is a blessing and I have a mission to fulfill with my blindness on this earth. I was flabbergasted. We don't normally say that, do we? That blindness is a blessing. We say uh, eyesight is a blessing and blindness is a curse. We say health is a blessing and illness is a curse. We say riches are a blessing and poverty is a curse. This youngster was saying something very different. But Jesus told me, my blindness is a blessing. And because it's a blessing, I have a mission with my blindness. And he laughed aloud and he asked me, Father, you met many people today, this morning. I said, yes. Did you invite anyone for a cup of tea? I said, no. You invited me because I'm blind, no, Father. Ah, that's exactly what I said. My blindness is a blessing. He said in a lighter vein. But then he said, Father, everyone having eyes, they never thank God for the eyesight. Father, he asked me again smiling, he asked me, Father, when did you thank God for your eyesight? I told him, Tommy, not today. Not yesterday, every day I opened my eyes in the morning. I never thanked God for my eyes. 
Exactly, Father. You have taken the eyesight for granted. Everybody has taken the eyesight for granted. And when there is something wrong happening, we complain against God. Taking for granted all the blessings God has given you. I remembered a saying, I complained, I don't have a pair of shoes until I saw a man without legs. Father, that's exactly what we are doing. You know, Father, my mission, my mission is to open the eyes of those who can see. I will smile like this. And you, Father, people having eyes, you will see me blind and yet happy, vibrant, smiling. And then you will realize how great it is to have eyesight. I will not see the face of any man, any woman in this world. The first face I am going to look at is the face of my God. When God calls me into his presence. And he was a happy young man. And his fathers and sisters... That is what the whole truth is. Behind everything happening to us, there is a whole truth to be unveiled, to be revealed to us. But it's important is to wait and pray. When anything goes wrong, to wait and pray. To become a servant, a handmaid of the Lord. Who is a servant? Two things make a servant. One, a servant is always attentive to the word of the master. A servant does not know what to do. A servant must be told and the servant must be listening. A servant is always attentive, always attentive to hear the word of the master. Two, a servant is always prepared, ready to do the will of the master. And that's what we must become. That's what Mother Mary became. Here am I, your servant, your handmaid. Let it be done to me according to your word. When we are able to be servants of God, that's when God is able to work on us. God is able to reveal the whole truth to us. But Mary became a servant and she was telling everyone to become a servant of God. That's why she said at Cana. At Cana there was a problem. Wine jars became empty. Nobody knew where to turn to. She knew where to turn to. She turned to Jesus they have no wine she turned the whole family to Jesus to what he tells you to what was she doing she was telling the family to be a servant of God wait upon God to do what he tells you to the whole family was prepared to do the will of God and Jesus said bring the jars over here and they brought the jars why? Water jars inside a banquet hall. Water jars are kept outside for the people, for the guests to wash the feet. Once the banquet begins, water is of no need. And yet Jesus said, fill the jars with water. They obeyed. Give it to the head waiter. The head waiter has no use of water. And yet they obeyed. That's when the miracle took place. Water was turned to wine. Jesus was able to do a miracle when the whole family became a servant of God. If miracles are happening and not happening to us, there's only one reason for this. We are not servants and handmaids of God. 
we mold we want to mold our own destiny i want to be the master of my destiny of my life that's exactly the big mistake the prodigal son did father give me my property i don't want you i want your property because i want to mold my destiny i want to do everything i want everything to happen to me according to my decision i am the master of my life that pride arrogance destroyed him he ended up in the pig sty he lost everything and that's when the light of the holy spirit entered into him he said i want to be a servant this is what he said i will tell my father i'm not worthy to be called a son treat me as a servant i'm your servant ready to obey your word i will wait upon you that's when he entered up into the arms of the father and he became a son indeed more than a son more than a son because the elder son said your younger son is more than me you love him more than you love me he became more than a son the miracles occur to us when we are able to be servants and handmaids of god the first name of the holy spirit the spirit of truth leading us to the whole truth that determines our style of living a style of consecrated life a second name that jesus gave to the holy spirit the holy spirit is power power from above there are two streams of powers coming from the holy spirit one stream the fruits of the holy spirit galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 the fruits of the holy spirit love peace joy patience kindness goodness self control faithfulness and gentleness these are fruits what does it mean fruits if you find mangoes on a tree know that tree is a mango tree by the fruits you will know the tree if the holy spirit anoints us these powers these powers will be there in us love is a power love is not a sweet sentiment as many people imagine love is a power to commit my life to the other enabling me to commit my life to the other even to die for the other that power of the holy spirit is what love is joy is a power joy is not a pleasant feeling when everything goes right everything will not go right anyway even when things go wrong with me i'm able to rejoice it's a power joy is a power peace is the tranquility of the holy spirit it's a power even when unfavorable situations occur to me i'm able to be, to hold on to jesus the power of tranquility gentleness self control is a power a power that enables me to say no to sin it's a power gentleness is a power patience is a power and this power is of the holy spirit jesus said when someone strikes you on one cheek turn to him the other as well well when someone strikes me as i said before 
There is a natural inclination to strike back, to be angry. That's a nature, natural inclination. But there is a supernatural power. When someone strikes me, I, I begin to get angry. I pray immediately. I can feel the patience, the love of the Holy Spirit flowing into me. With that power, Jesus said, I will be able to turn the other cheek as well. It's a power. The two powers in us. The natural power and the supernatural power. They go by natural instincts. We need to wait and pray for that supernatural power to descend upon us. When I face a temptation, the natural inclination is to give in. But I wait and I pray. The supernatural power of self-control of the Holy Spirit flows into me. When a failure occurs to me, my natural reaction is to be sad, is to be a plum, as psychologists say, plum, get depressed. But when I pray, I get the power, power of the Holy Spirit to rejoice because I know this failure is for my good. And the Lord will turn it to my good. I'm able to rejoice. These are the powers of the Holy Spirit. The fruits of the Holy Spirit. The one stream of the power of the Holy Spirit. There is another stream. Another stream of the power of the Holy Spirit. What St. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The gifts of the Holy Spirit. The charismatic gifts of the Holy Spirit. That's the other stream of the powers of the Holy Spirit. The power of prophecy. The power of the word of knowledge. The power of healing. The power of preaching. The power of miracles. The power of prayer. Now these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What does it mean gifts? We don't merit them. They are given as gifts. Say for example, the power of healing. You know, people imagine this power is given only to some special people. An esoteric gift given to some special people. And we call them healers, some special people. No, this power is given to everyone. Jesus said, lay your hands on the sick and pray and the sick will be healed. It's a promise given to everyone who surrenders his her life in the hands of God. There are no special people God has appointed as super specialists. In hospitals we go for super specialists. There are no super specialists. This power of healing is given to everyone. And therefore, when I go and visit a person, a sick person, how do we go to visit a sick person? <laughs> we have ready-made jokes. We have ready-made jokes. When I go and visit a sick person, poor man is lying there, cancer. And we, two or three of us, go and sit there and crack jokes and speak politics. If this man could lift his leg up, he will kick you out of the room. This man is sick. And he knows only God can heal him. And we are cracking jokes, talking with all sorts of things with each other, leaving him alone on the bed. The one thing I must be doing is to pray. Is to pray. Pray for that person. And console him. 
and comfort him. When people come to us, giving us, telling us of their problems, what do we do? We try to console them. Oh, that's okay. That will be all right. How we know it will not be all right. And yet, a cheap consolation that will be all right. Who can make it all right? Only God can make it all right. I must be praying. Remember, an advocate from Cochin came to see me once. He told me, Father, I have a very deep problem in my family. He said he went and shared that problem with Bishop Sebastian Arendrath of Anaglum. The bishop heard me out. The bishop spoke to me. Finally, the bishop prayed for me. And he was so happy. The bishop prayed for me. The bishop told me, my son, only God can solve this problem. There is wait and pray. And he felt so blessed that the bishop prayed for him. We are the consecrated people. We visit a family. What do we do when we visit a family? We drink the tea and speak of all sorts of political news and we come away. Then why did I visit that family? Every family I visit, I must spend time in prayer, leading them to God. This is what the gift of the Holy Spirit is. Gift of the Holy Spirit. A gift of prayer. A gift of healing. A gift of preaching. The moment I become a headmaster, I stop preaching. I will not even, I will not even say a Sunday Mass. I am a teacher, I am a die. Preaching is a command, a command given to every priest, everyone consecrated. But if fathers and sisters, let us pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that we may be able to be effective in our ministry to others. So the Holy Spirit is the power from above. The third name given to the Holy Spirit. John 16, 7, Jesus said, The Holy Spirit is the Comforter. As the Comforter, what does the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit comforts us. Remember St. Paul, 2 Corinthians chapter 1, St. Paul says, With the comfort with which we are comforted, by God, we want to comfort you. We should be comforted by the Holy Spirit. Only when we are comforted by the Holy Spirit, we will be able to comfort you. I, a woman came to a sister, a reverend sister, speaking of her problems in the family. The problems with the husband, with the children. She was very sad. And the sister comforted her. The sister said, Even if you have all those problems, your way of life is better than mine. Is that a comfort? Well, comforter, when I talk to someone, the grievance, the complaint in my heart, that's not what should be coming out. The comfort with which I am comforted is what I should be able to comfort others with the comforter. Mother Mary, she was deeply troubled, and yet, when the Holy Spirit came upon her, she began to rejoice. What a heavenly comfort filled her heart. And her joy became contagious. Her joy became contagious. Everyone 
began to rejoice. Elizabeth began to sing. And the baby in the womb of Elizabeth began to dance, leaping for joy. The comforter. Peter and John. Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Verses 40, 41. They were flogged at the pillar in the jail. And they came out. They came out praising God. The whole body was beaten up. Every cell was bruised. Burning with pain. And yet they were so comforted by the Holy Spirit. They had no complaints. They were praising God. They did not say, hey, look at this. We proclaimed Jesus. What did we get? What did we get after having proclaimed Jesus? Where was Jesus when our bodies were flogged? Where was Jesus? No, no, no complaints. No grievances. They were so comforted by the Holy Spirit. They came out praising God, rejoicing. Praising God for having been found worthy to suffer dishonor for the sake of Jesus. The one thing we pray for is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit may anoint us that we may become servants and handmaids as Mother Mary teaches us. At the moment of every experience of ours, whatever, whatever experience, at the moment of every experience of our life, we turn to God, waiting and praying. Waiting and praying, becoming servants and handmaids of God. And that is the success of consecrated life. A life in the Holy Spirit.